I-28 female was raised by super religious parents. It was a fight to be able to go to a normal college and not a Christian one with weird rules. When I did that, they said that they would not be paying for my schooling until I come back to the right path. After struggling for a couple of months, a friend told me that the club she was working at was hiring. I've been dancing my whole life and have a good figure, so I was hired pretty fast. A few months in, I dropped out of college because I was making serious money, about 3K for a bad week and 11K for a really good one. When my parents found out, they disowned me. The same goes for all of my extended family except for two cousins. Fast forward nine years. I own my house outright, a Tesla. I don't have debt. I also own an apartment building that I rent. My career has a short lifespan and investments. Now my parents contacted me. Apparently my father lost his business during global issue. My mom has always been a stay-at-home mom. They declared bankruptcy and are really struggling. They live in an old camper. Also, apparently my mom is diabetic now and my dad has always had heart problems. They wanted my help. I said, no, I don't have parents anymore. And furthermore, according to their religion and church, my money was earned while sinning. So to use it is to damn your soul to the bad place. And I really didn't want that for them. So my mom started crying and my dad said that they didn't know where they went wrong with me. That was the last of it from them. A couple of aunts and uncles called, but they changed their family helps family tune very fast when I asked why they weren't helping them themselves. But now a couple of weeks later, I'm starting to feel like I was an idiot to them because a month's income would make a really big change for them, but I won't even miss it that bad. So am I the idiot? Not the idiot. They don't get to say your money is sinful, you're not our daughter, and then come begging for a handout almost a decade later when their finances are messed. You can't have it both ways, parents. They decided their faith and religion was more important than their child, and they could continue living with that decision. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even apologize, and they're expecting you to just take care of them like they were the world's best parents. Now, on the other hand, if a month's income can give you peace of mind, then go ahead. Count it as charity and get good karma. How likely are they to leave you alone after you throw a couple of thousand dollars at them. It sounds like you need to figure out beforehand what outcome you want. The ball is in your court. I just think it's really likely that they'll become more aggressive with their demands, given how they perceive you as property rather than a person. Set yourself some good boundaries and don't cross them. So not the idiot OP. Let them know they're in your thoughts and prayers. You are the idiot. If one has the means to help one's parent and doesn't, one is almost always the idiot. This is your chance to right a great wrong. You did not cause this wrong. The blame lies squarely at your parents' feet. They don't deserve your kindness or help, which would make you helping them so much more wonderful. So do a remarkable thing and throw them at least a lifeline. In the end, you'll be glad that you did. Dude, OP doesn't owe their parents anything. You shouldn't be on a moral high horse right now and honest to God. It sounds like OP was abused via religious trauma. When you disown someone, you don't get to take it back just because you need money. They deserve nothing and can sleep in the bed they made. Actions have consequences and they deserve nothing from OP. My brother, 30, is diabetic. He has type 1 diabetes and got it when he was young. As his older sibling, I grew up watching my parents manage this condition for him. He's always been traumatized by this condition and never came to terms with it. So what he used to do, and still does, is act like his condition doesn't exist. The family, mom is now deceased, didn't know how to handle it, because if we let him act like that, there would be significant consequences. So we took it upon ourselves to manage his condition. We'd watch his eating habits and correct them, watch his insulin intake, and encourage him to live healthily. When he brought his now wife home, we told her how it was, and that he can be reckless and in denial about his condition, so she needed to help and work with us and keep an eye on him. She did her best at first, but started caving in to his complaints about not being able to eat this or that, or when he complained about his insulin intake and having to pay for it. He got increasingly worse in the past three months. We didn't know exactly what was happening until his wife told us he was in the hospital 
because of a hyperglycemic episode. His blood sugar levels were too high. He almost went into a diabetic coma. The reason for this was that he wasn't taking the right dosage of insulin. I talked to his wife and argued with her. She said he deliberately kept stretching out his insulin dosage to be able to save insulin and not have to buy it. I told her she should have kept an eye on him. It's unfortunate that their insurance is screwed and their financial situation is rough, but she should have stopped him and not stood there watching. She said I was too hard on her, but I told her if he was doing this under the family's watch, we wouldn't have allowed it. And so she bears part of the blame for him staying in the hospital. She started crying and asked for a minute for herself. I went home because I couldn't see him after waiting for long. My dad called later, asking about my conversation with my sister-in-law. I refrained from talking about it, but he said she called him and told him everything. He said I shouldn't have said this to her and made her feel guilty. I said I was just disappointed she let this happen and expected her to be the responsible one if my brother wasn't. He said I have to apologize, but I'm unsure whether I was completely at fault here because I feel there's a bit of neglect on her part. You are the idiot. Your brother is 30 years old. He's a grown adult. His wife cannot be on Donut Watch 24-7. She can't take food out of his hand. She can't force medication into his body. He is an adult who has made self-destructive choices about his health. I know it's hard to hear when he's in the hospital, but his own irresponsibility is what landed him there. And if you're going to point the finger at his wife, you should point one even more at your parents. All of your enabling has allowed your brother to grow into the irresponsible adult he is now. I hope your brother recovers. The come to Jesus talk you need to be having is with him, not his wife. You are the idiot. She's his wife, not his mommy. Stop treating women like caretakers. Why is the entire family treating this man like a pet cat who needs to be watched and medicated? The only possible reason for this is that he has mental disabilities which limit his ability to see to his own care. But that's not been established in the story, just that they treat him that way. So you knew they needed financial help to manage his condition and you sat back and did nothing? Or did you do nothing because you know that's not the problem and your brother's just making excuses? If you're not allowed to take his complaints seriously or let him make his own mistakes when he does that, why doesn't she? Poor wife probably thought she was marrying a man and not a toddler. You and your family are to blame. Ever since my brother, 30, moved out to start living with his family in another city, I, 25 male, have been living alone in my parents' house. Our parents go to another country to work and visit two to three times a year. My brother has twin sons, toddlers, and brings them over almost every week. He leaves them to stay overnight usually Friday to Saturday or Saturday to Sunday with me, so he can have some fun with his wifey. I love my nephews and don't mind babysitting them at all, but they can be a little too much sometimes. So the other weekend when they brought them over, Tara, brother's wife, told me that they are apparently fully potty trained, had no accidents whatsoever, and no longer needed to wear diapers in bed. I did what I was told, and as you can guess, they had an accident in my bed. I'm not sure if both of them did or just one, but both of them were soaking wet. Apart from wet sheets and clothes, no bigger damage was done. For some reason, I never took off the plastic wrapping around the mattress. I told Tara what had happened, and she just said that accidents happen, and I should have made them go to the bathroom and not give them anything to drink before going to bed. Last weekend, they brought them again. I asked Tara if she brought diapers for them, and she said with a raised voice, it was an accident, it won't happen again, trust me, and ran back to the car. Night came and I was like, screw it, I don't want to deal with mess again. So apart from one soggy diaper, it went great until I told Tara about it. She literally yelled at me, saying that I'm messed up for forcing her children to wear diapers, that it'll bring back the bad habits, and it wouldn't be a big deal if they had an accident in bed again. I tried reasoning with her, but she just called me a dumb idiot before saying that she'll never bring the kids again and storming off to the car. I looked at my brother who was standing nearby and it seemed like he was trying to keep a straight face. He followed after her and when he got to the car, he yelled, see you next week. Am I the idiot? Why do you even do this? 
You need to be out with your friends on the weekend, not providing a free babysitting and butt wiping service for your lazy brother and sister in law. I never thought of dumping my kids every weekend on my family, let alone deciding it was fine to let them pee the bed and throw a fit when someone found a solution. Right? The entitlement of those two. I have two kids and can't imagine getting rid of them every weekend just to have fun. Like, what? OP needs to stop babysitting and set some boundaries. Like, I get if he wants to be a good uncle and help out, but that's just way too much. Not the idiot, but your brother and sister-in-law are freaking idiots. They decided to have those kids, and now they should start parenting their darn kids. They aren't things that you can just get rid of on the weekends and decide to be child-free. That's not how it works. OP seriously stop babysitting overnight, at least for now. Your brother is a coward who can't stand up to you. I, 28 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 29, for a little over two and a half years. When we began to get serious, I told him I didn't want to have kids and wasn't interested in that as it wouldn't be fair to string him along when things began to get serious. He wanted kids, but we talked it over and he decided he could live without kids. Things were fine until we visited my family for my dad's birthday a few days ago. He saw some old pictures of me when I was 20 and heavily pregnant. He was upset and asked me what this was and thought I'd have a child and given them up. I explained to him that my older sister and her husband had been struggling with fertility and she'd had several miscarriages. So I offered to carry their child for them and my seven-year-old niece was the result of this. I in no way feel maternal towards her. She is their biological child and I've never felt I was anything but the handy oven for that bun. I never brought it up before as I didn't think it mattered and it was so long ago that it wasn't really anyone else's business. He, however, feels differently and when we left, he told me I should have told him and said how it wasn't fair I'd been willing to give my sister a child but wouldn't even consider having one with him. I got upset as there is a big difference between carrying a child and raising a child and told him as much. I told him I was sorry for not telling him but I honestly hadn't felt it was his business, as it had been years before we got together. I then reminded him how he had been the one to say he could live without children, as I'd warned him long ago. He's still upset with me. I honestly didn't think I did anything wrong here. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Does he understand that your niece is not your biological child? That possible confusion is the only explanation I can think of for why he would react as such unless he legitimately thought the only reason you didn't want kids was because you didn't want to deal with pregnancy. I'm going to say everyone's the idiot here. Here's why. You and your boyfriend discussed children and you had to assume he would see those pictures if he stuck around long. Your pregnancy should have been mentioned. He reacted on a big scale, which is understandable, but he's basically saying you had a baby for them. You should be willing to have one for me too, which is not cute. You both made the mistake of thinking that he could just be okay without kids. If you choose to have kids for him, you will resent him and possibly the kids. Please think this through carefully. I agree, that was a red flag for me. Either he's trying to fool himself and will end up resenting her and or leaving her, or he's hoping OP will change her mind and give him what he wants. Based on his reaction to the news, I'm guessing it's the latter. Honestly, you are the idiot for the simple fact that something like that is huge, even if it wasn't your egg. It's a huge fact not to tell your SO of two and a half years about, and I think you know that, or you wouldn't be seeking the opinion of strangers online. Can't really imagine going out with someone for that long and not mentioning, oh, you know my niece? I'm the one who gave birth to her. I, 48 female, have five kids. My twin boys and my triplets, two boys and a girl. Currently, the older twins share a room. The younger twins have a room and the girl has a room. All kids could have their own rooms, but they chose to share. This year, my boys all came together. They asked if they could all pool their birthday money for a room makeover. They weren't their beds and clothing in one room and desk in the other room for a gamer's paradise and have been saving last year's birthday presents and their Christmas money from the last two years. I painted their gaming room a dark gray with leftover paint for my parents' renovation, but added LEDs as the main light source on the ceiling and under the desk and on each shelf. 
made the closet into a built-in bookshelf for video games and their figurines, along with wall shelves, added a couple of mini fridges for drinks, a mini snack vending machine, and painted their desk to match. Then changed their sleeping and clothing arrangement. I did not spend any additional money outside of the budget, and the boys all helped with the manual labor of moving stuff and painting furniture that my daughter did witness. Now my daughter's jealous that I didn't do her room as well. We explained that the boys have been saving money in birthday and Christmas presents, and she asked me to make a total room makeover plan too. So we did, and it would cost about the same as what the boys did. She wanted all new furniture along with painting it and crafting setup. I told her if she wanted exactly this room, she would need to contribute X amount of dollars and even came up with a plan if she wanted to do extra chores. All kids get this opportunity. But if she didn't want new furniture, we could repurpose the old stuff between storage and what's currently in there and she could afford it this year. My husband thinks I'm not being fair to her because there were four boys to save money and there's only one of her. I said we shouldn't be picking favorites and that all kids should be at the same standard. And yes, there's one of her, but I didn't buy the boys any new furniture and she wants all new stuff, not renovated. Well, we were having a family dinner with my parents and my daughter asked grandpa for money because I wasn't being fair and favoring the boys. I stopped that immediately and told my dad the entire story. Now my family is split on the verdict. My mom says I'm the idiot for the same reason as my husband, but my dad says I'm teaching her a valuable lesson on budgeting and repurposing. So my husband and I, who regularly frequent here, are wondering, am I the idiot for keeping my daughter at the same standard as my boys? You are the idiot. I think your husband makes a good point. Four people can save up quicker than one and can make four times one person's income. It's great that the boys chose to share, but realistically, this isn't a choice for the teenage girl. It's not her fault she isn't a boy and can't, therefore, share with the boy. With this in mind, I disagree that she's being treated fairly. I think asking her to save a fourth would be reasonable, as each of the boys did. You are the idiot. I can see where you're coming from. Still, from her perspective, she's the only girl. She's excluded from the gaming paradise because of her gender, excluded from sharing a room because of her gender, and now she's excluded from the decorating and planning like her brothers did, with a lot of help from you. I'm not really surprised she's jealous. Her four brothers just worked on a really cool project with her parents, getting the bedrooms and gaming area they want, while she's basically sidelined. I can see why it feels really unfair to her. Did you notice that OP referred to having two sets of twins and a girl? Despite the girl literally being a triplet of one of those pairs of boys, I can't imagine how excluded she probably feels in that household. I expect there's more going on in that than just a gaming room.